Hi folks and welcome to the 14th episode in my Getting Started series for the game B17 Flying Fortress The Mighty Eighth. Now in this video we're going to be going through quick start mission number four which is opportunity for the Axis. So let's get started. So let's uh, go to the new game panel in the top left and then we'll click on the continue switch in the lower right and then the choose a quick start mission panel in the top right and then we'll click on the continue switch in the lower right again. So we'll just scroll down the quick start missions here and there we go quick start mission number four opportunity for the axis and as it says here the American fighters have been making your job very difficult of late. Finally your fighters have found a formation of bombers that are unaccompanied by their fighters leaving them easy meat for you. This is your chance to inflict heavy losses on the bombers and win a battle for the Luftwaffe. So I think as I mentioned in the prior video to this one, the one that covers fighter school for the BF-109, um, you'll actually be flying a BF-109 in this quick start mission, hence the reason I did the fighter school tutorial video for the BF-109 before this quick start mission. So hopefully that means you'll be well prepared and uh, certainly have, will have been practicing flying your BF-109. So, okay, so without further ado, let's get going. So I'm going to click on the play selected mission switch in the lower right. So I'm actually just going to pause the quick start mission here because I want to uh, just describe the scenario to you and touch on a few uh, specifics. Um, so let's go to the exterior view by pressing the F2 key and what we can see is that we are part of a squadron of four BF-109s and the first one is just peeling off there uh, to intercept the B-17s. Now if I move the mouse to the right hand side of the screen we can see that there is in fact a second BF-109 squadron in this quick start mission and if I click on that icon we get taken to that squadron and we can see again that that squadron is also starting to peel off to attack the B-17s. So let's head back to the uh, first squadron again by clicking on the first squadron icon. Um, I also just want to mention the fact that we are attacking a single squadron of six B-17s and we can see um, from these icons that there are no allied fighters, there are no little friends providing support for the B-17 squadron as was described in the mission briefing at the beginning. So the only defense the B-17s have are their gun stations and the interlocking fields of fire that the formation creates. And I would just say I can attest to the fact that certainly the way it's modeled in this game, um, that interlocking field of fire is pretty intense and it's very effective. The AI gunners are actually very good um, in this game. So uh, when you are attacking the B-17 squadron, I always suggest you keep your throttle at 100%. You want to keep yourself as a fast target so you're much harder for the machine gunners to lock onto. Um, the 109s are actually very small nimble aircraft um, but nevertheless you will get hit and you will get hit quite a lot and they take damage very quickly. I don't know how accurately that's modeled in the game but certainly the way it is modeled um, it really doesn't take many hits for you to either lose uh, power in your engine in which case you'll see the manifold pressure drop off and you'll hear the tone of the engine change um, or you may actually be so crippled that um, you'll either end up with oil spraying over your windscreen um, or you may actually explode. Um, if that does happen, if you do become crippled and you can no longer function or you're no longer operational or you've run out of ammunition, um, then you can switch to another uh, BF-109 within the squadron that you're currently in by pressing the square bracket keys on the keyboard and you can use the left or right one and that will just cycle forwards and backwards um, amongst the various 109s that are within your squadron. Now if you want to cycle to uh, a 109 in the other squadron then you have to move the mouse to the right hand side of the screen in the exterior view, click on the icon for the other squadron and then you can cycle through the 109s within that squadron. Uh, the only other thing I just want to touch on here is the fact that the exterior fuel tanks, the drop tanks, are still attached to the 109s at this stage. Um, and I'm going to let the AI jettison those. They get jettisoned right at this beginning point here. 
and that's because um, obviously the 109s need their maneuverability for the attack runs. Um, but if you want to manually jettison the drop tank, then please uh, look at the getting started video number 13, the one before this one, and that is fighter school number one for the BF 109. And if you go to the section after I've taken off, I do go through the procedure for manually jettisoning, jettisoning the drop tank, um, getting the fuel uh, supply switched over from the exterior to the interior fuel tanks and getting that engine restarted. So please watch that video um, if you want to find out how to do that manually. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to unpause the simulation by pressing the pause on the keyboard. We're going to watch the drop tank being jettisoned and then we're going to head inside for the first attack run on the B-17 squadron. So here we go. Okay, there goes the drop tank, F1 to go back inside. I'm just going to wait for the AI to stabilize the flight path. And then I'm going to press M to go into manual mode. And you can see the B-17 squadron just coming up, up there. So don't forget to lead your shots ahead of the B-17s. And um, that's a technique called de deflection shooting, I believe. And there's plenty of information on the web and um, on YouTube that others have created um, that I'm not going to go into that here. I really just want to focus on the basic controls and methodology of uh, playing this particular scenario. So I'm not going to go through gunnery techniques, for fighter gunnery techniques. So we kind of failed miserably on that first pass there. I don't really think I got any hits, but the key is to do short bursts so that you don't waste ammunition. So try and not hold down your uh, trigger or your gunnery buttons on your keyboard. Um, do it in short bursts so you preserve your ammunition so you hopefully will have quite a few passes um, against the B-17s. I think that way you'll probably have more chance of getting hits on the B-17s than you would otherwise. So what I'm doing is I'm going to fly ahead of the B-17 squadron um, and then come back and attack them from the front. And the reason I'm doing that is because that kind of gives us a relative speed difference of something around 450 miles an hour and it makes you a very fast target for the B-17 gunners to try and hit. Um, if you come from the rear of the B-17 squadron, the relative speed difference is probably something like only a little bit over 150 miles per hour, so you are a far easier target to hit. And these interlocking fields of fire from the tail gunners is uh, very, very effective. And um, every time I've tried to attack from the rear, um, I get shot up pretty badly very, very quickly, so I don't recommend you do that. So while we're flying ahead here, I'm actually just going to do a little bit of trimming because it keeps pulling to the left. So I'm just going to hold down shift and tap delete and then control and page down a couple of times to do a bit of fine trimming on my ailerons. We're also pulling up quite severely so I'm going to do shift and end to do a bit of trimming on the elevators. I want to get to an altitude of about 9,000 feet so we've actually crept up too high. So I'm going to let us come down to around 9,000 feet. So just for the trim commands, I highly recommend you get the reference card out for the game. Go to the control key section and study those trim commands. They are your friend. So we've come a, come a ways forward now, but the problem is we've got no visual indication of where the B-17 squadron is. So Waver Design provided a neat feature, uh, and they have these camera padlocking commands, and they are on the reference uh, card on the, and on, under the control key section again. The table on the right-hand side at the top has all the padlocking commands. So I'm going to use the padlock the nearest B-17. So I'm going to hold down control and tap Y, and the camera has moved around to the right and uh, it's facing backwards. So the B-17 squadron is behind us and to the back. So I'm going to turn 180 degrees now. I'm going to throttle back to 50%. Bank. 
and pull back on my joystick. I'm just going to go to the exterior view here just to show you that. So F1 to go back inside and what we can see is that the camera is now coming round to the front of the 109 here. And I think you can probably just see in the distance there are the dots of the B-17 squadron. So once I've got them in visual range, I no longer need to keep the camera padlock on. So I need to put my throttle back up. There you go, there's a mistake. Don't forget to put your throttle back up to 100% when you are returning and attacking. Um, so yeah, so I've got visual. I'm within visual range so I can see the B-17 squadron. So I can now unpadlock the camera view because if you fly through the squadron or you get too close to the squadron when the padlock view is on, then the camera is going to spin all over the place as it tries to keep track of the squadron, the B-17s, as you maybe fly through them. So you want to unpadlock it once you're within, once you're within visual range. So hold down the shift key and tap U to unpadlock or deactivate the padlock view. So now it's just a case of manually flying back to the B-17s and going for another attack run. Yeah, it looks to me, see the way they blink into view, it's kind of crazy how you actually can't see them for a while. I'm going to try and get some on this damaged one here. And now I'm going to get away, get away, go down. Okay. You see, I really didn't fire that great deal. I pressed down both the cannon and machine gun triggers at the same time. And you can see, if you look at the ammo counters here, my cannons are almost out of ammunition already. It really is crazy how quickly the ammunition depletes. So again, I'm going to get back to a head of around 150 to try and get ahead of the B-17 squadron. I'm just going to do the padlock again, control Y. Yeah, look behind us, shift U. Now, as I've kind of said before, I'm, I'm really not an AV sim guy. I, I have very, very little experience with um, AV sims. In fact, I think B-17 is probably the one, about the only one I've got any real experience with. So you'll have to excuse my poor skills in relation to understanding how to fly these fighters in terms of the best approach to throttles and turning and use of, use of rudder, etc. Um, so if you've got any hints and tips for me, uh, I'd love to get those uh, in the comment section below. So please, you know, give me some tips. And that will be useful not just for me, but it will be useful for others who are watching this video and reading the comments. So it's probably far enough, so I'm going to do Control y again to padlock onto the B-17s. I'm going to throttle back to 50%, bank, and pull back to turn. Okay, there we go. So I say, whenever I try and do a turn like that at 100% throttle, I always find in this game it uh, seems to be really kind of unstable. Now I'm not sure whether that's realistic or not, but it's certainly the case I've found. So 50% throttle on a tight turn seems to work quite nicely. Okay, so the camera's banking off to the left, so the squadron is. B-17s are clearly over in this direction. And 
think we can see a black trail up there from the damaged engines. There we go, they blink into view again, so I'm just going to do shift U to deactivate the padlock again. You can see I never actually managed to really get a good frontal attack. Again, another kind of weakness of mine. Ah, fell miserably. Okay. Now I'm going to throw the gauntlet down to you guys. I have never succeeded in... Oh, <laughs> we need to get away from the 17s. They're still firing at us. We're still within range, so it's probably far enough. So I'm going to bank left and get back to 150 heading. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to throw down the gauntlet to you guys. I have never succeeded. I've never got a victory condition for this particular quick start mission. <laughs> and there we go um, and I'm sure I haven't got one this time so yeah I failed again this was an excellent opportunity that your fighters badly bungled by failing to inflict sufficient losses on an unguarded bomber formation you have caused a large morale rise for American crews and a morale drop for our own pilots you have performed below par as a fighter pilot perhaps you would perform better as an infantryman on the Russian front yeah, I'm not even sure I'd be a particularly good infantryman either, actually. So, <laughs> Anyway, so I, I'm throwing the gauntlet down to you guys. Um, if you can succeed in this mission, I will eat my hat. No, I won't. Seriously, I won't eat my hat. What I would love for you to do is to provide an after-battle action report. Please describe what tactics you used in the comments section below. And I would also love to know what text is included in the success debriefing book here um, uh, if you succeed in this mission. So again, please provide that information in the comment section below. I have tried multiple times and I've even actually been in scenarios where we have taken out one B-17 and it has crashed and it is still not sufficient to cause a victory condition for this. So I think you need to take out at least two B-17s, maybe more, I don't know. So again, I'd like to know what those victory conditions are. So yeah, please, uh, please let me know. So anyway, that's about, I think, all I wanted to cover in this. Uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up below. That really helps me um, rise in the YouTube rankings. That would be really useful. It gives me a bit more visibility. Um, if you haven't subscribed, please click on that subscribe link below as well. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching, folks. Uh, thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.